The movie. Yes. The perfect match. Yes. Now, we talked previously a little bit about it that was getting ready. It was about to come out. Mm -hmm. Just like there's some works. But now it's official. We could talk yeah. in depth about it. Yes. You're acting in it, and you're also producing. Pr producing. Yeah. What do you like more? Um, Producing is fun. You know, mm -hmm. producing is fun. And, and just having a vision and, and seeing it through is a lot of fun. And, you know, whenever you can be in control of your own narrative, that, that's always amazing as well. But, you know, to be able to act in scenes with Paula Patton and Lauren London and right. Dasha Planko and Cassie, it, I mean, it was it was a, a dream job. A lot of beautiful job. women. Yeah, it was a lot. It was a dream job. This is yeah. why you wanted to produce this, it's, is so listen. that you can have all these hot girls. You know, line them up. Ice, <laughs> ice them cream up scoops. Knock. Ice cream scoops. <laughs> yes. So you and Cassie are an item in this movie. You could say that. Somewhat, because She's, you're a player in the movie. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And and um, Donald Faison plays one of my best friend, uh, best friends. He bets me that I can't just be with one woman until our other boy's wedding. And so I take the challenge, and I just start seeing one woman, uh, Cassie. Yeah. And and it ends up, you know, with me really falling for her, and she breaks my heart in a way. That Wait, you, how? Wait, can you tell now, us? You won't see it coming, because, like, you know, my heart gets broken, and... And um, I mean, you really watch the transformation of, of a man, and I think I think it'll be really interesting for women to see it, because women just think, you know, as soon as we go through a breakup, we in the club popping bottles, we right. go to the strip club, but it, yo, we be on the couch like this watching, <laughs> watching, you know, yeah, watching Emotional. the notebook, you know, so so yes, yeah, so you get to see that, and um, I mean, just some great performances, and it's really funny, you know, yeah. my character is an agent, and uh, he has a lot of uh, music clients, so Brandy plays a role, nice. French Montana. Hannah, it's funny as hell. That's right, yeah. Yeah, yeah, so it's 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 a good one, man. It's a good one. God, you got you get your heart broken. Yeah, you get your heart broken. Have you felt this pain before in real life? Absolutely. Because guys, you know, that's the thing. I think a lot of times as women, we think that guys don't get their hearts broken. Or if they do, it's not as severe as ours. Well, I think when you have a when you have a good woman yeah. and and you lose her, especially for reasons that 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 are your own, right? Yeah. If you if you made if you could have had her and you ruined it, and then you watch her be happy with someone, yeah. it's hard, especially for a man. We're possessive creatures. You learn from it and you become a better man hopefully for, for the next one. You know? Are you ready to be a good man for the next person in real life? You know, right now... <laughs> I'm uh, you, I, I, I'm really full. I think when a man has his career all the way where he wants it to be, and and I'm trying something new, you know, I'm, yeah. I'm excited, and uh, I just put all of my effort into to this film, yeah. And so I'm not ready for for that just yet. Not yet. Not just yet. Are you checking your DMs? So I think I got my notifications. To, you want to show me if I can? Listen, you know what? We can look through it together because I don't know how to like really. You don't know how to use a DM? No, not really. You know what it is? I understand because when you update, it changes like the format. And like yeah. for the longest time, I didn't update my like notifications. So yeah. I'm sure you're getting a lot of DMs. Don't worry. But is it? Is it, it's not like because you have you ever DM'd me? No. It's exactly. So you're, who I'm looking for is not going to DM me. So oh. I'm, I got to wait till I'm out in real life and meet people and be around. Because nobody, yeah. So I, How do I, I don't you know. meet someone, though? Like, for your caliber and what you do, like, I can't imagine, like, a nice young lady could get a hold of you like that, right? Um, You know, I look for my ladies in church. Shut at up. At the library. Cut it out. Let me see. Where else, Ness? <laughs> uh, where are we at? Uh, TGI Friday. You probably Friday. like the model chicks. You know, the Instagram models. Um, where else I be at? Um, you know, <laughs> volunteer, YMCA, counselors, you know, that type of thing. Oh, School Terrence. teachers. You know. You're not ready for that. That's why you got movies like The Perfect Match out right I now. I get it all out of my system on the screen. You know? So now let's talk about this movie. So you and Cassie, now at any point, were you thinking like, you know, I need to get approval from Puff before all I that. kiss her or anything? So so she comes in, you know, we 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 do the I call her, I'm like, look, you know, we have this this role, it's really mysterious, and we were thinking of like who could really pull it off and you know, do you act? And she was like, Yeah, I've been taking acting classes, I really wanna try. So she comes in, kills the audition, right? Really? So she kills like two rounds of auditions and right. we're like, All right, we gotta go with this girl. 
So then I'm, I'm like going through the script and I'm pinning the page and I'm like, oh, we really got like some. And then you get what's called uh, a nudity writer, right? What's and a so nudity writer? A nudity writer comes from the studio and, and basically you got to sign off that like, you know, we, we can show, but we can show like, oh. so, so we, I got that. And I was like, oh, so Billy, we're going to really shoot this. Yeah. And, and so he's like, yeah. So then I'm, then I'm really starting to think like, damn. Puff is going to kill me. Yeah, Puff is going to kill you. And and I think Cassie felt that in rehearsals because Puff FaceTimed me and was just like, yo, Playboy, you it's good. All... He's like, yo, you my little brother. I, I'm going to be more mad at you if this movie's whack than I am if you touch her. So make it look real. Make it look authentic. And then after that, it was just like, you know, we got to do what we got to do. That's You know what that is? That's respect, man. Yeah. You know what I mean? That just shows you as a gentleman, like, hey, man. I, mm. Puff gave me my first suit. Exactly. Yeah, it's a real OG. It, in sex scenes and movies, I always feel like if you think you can kick the person's ass that's making out with your your girl, then you'll be okay with it. Yeah. But I think if I was like six foot five and Puff felt like he couldn't take me, yeah. I think in Puff's mind, he's, you know what I'm saying? If, if it would have been like that, he'd have been like, yo, you ain't touching her. Yeah. You ain't touching Like, he ain't going to let some dudes, I don't think would have been able to get away with it like me. Yeah, you know exactly. I mean? yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. It wouldn't happen. <laughs> Nah, if Michael Ely would have been in his role, oh, no, no, no. he'd have been like, no, 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 Playboy, you're not doing that. You're yeah, not you're doing that. You're going to have to relax. You're not doing that. It's not happening. <laughs> so what is it about producing that you really think is so much fun? Like, let's talk a little bit about that because we've just seen you grow on TV. and You know, even when we look at what's happening with the Oscars, right? Right. And we look at uh, diversity as an overall topic in entertainment. Uh we need people to step into the back offices. And and a lot of times the way you get that experience is, is by being in front of the camera. Right. So I've spent years, you know, on sets. I, I've oh, spent yeah. every day on set watching producers. And I've spent, you know, several hours on set watching like Will Packer and doing movies with, with you know, yeah. really talented and solid producers. And so you pick up things and you learn things and, you know, you read enough uh, enough scripts and you, you know how to cover scripts. And then I got to the point where I'm like, I really want to create narratives and I really want to create, you know, sophisticated, you know, films for us. You know, you be laying in the bed sometimes and, you know, you be with your man, I'll yeah. be with my lady. And it's like, all right, the notebooks here, like you go to romance on iTunes. And oh, it's yeah, like, it's not it's not you don't see us. When do we see you know, when do we see? So I'm like, this movie is like a 500 days of summer. It's yeah. like it's got it's got real dialogue and real thought provoking subject matter. So it's funny. You're going to get that. Yeah. But it's a real story. And that's what I want. I wanted to make a, a dope ass, sophisticated, sophisticated, beautiful black romance romance movie this story is it's a roller coaster ride yeah. and, and and it doesn't necessarily end with a bow at the end you know right. it's and so and and i love movies like that like i love 500 days of summer i yeah. love you know the faults in our stars and and i just wanted to see a movie like one of those with us in it yeah you know and so that's what we did what do you think about everybody talking about the boycott and you know it's obviously jada pinkett smith felt how she felt how what are your stance on this because you are actually involved in the film world you know um and i don't want to compare I'm, I'm i'm this is not of course not the gravity of 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 the civil rights movement by any stretch but we learn from history right and so when you look at martin luther king jr and malcolm x they had two totally different approaches right and so a lot of times martin luther king jr was able to gain conversation and gain leverage because of the work that malcolm x was doing right so he would be able to say you don't want to deal with that guy yeah because if, if we let that guy loose y'all are going to really be in trouble mm -hmm. if it's a real revolution industry so you don't want to deal with that guy so so you you kind of need both so i think that there's an interesting duality with though you know some people support the boycott and are, and are taking a real you know hard line with it and others are like nah you gotta go Chris Rock's gonna be there you know there's a black producer with Reginald Hudlin the the head of the 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 Academy is a sister right. so so you know there there's two mindsets but either way I think it's good that the dialogue is happening right. and and it's not just a black problem it's, you know, Hispanics uh, need yeah. to be represented in film, Asian Americans, yeah. Native Americans, women. So yeah. it's it's just something that will take time, but it's good that the dialogue is happening because then we'll see the change, you know, become affected over years. Do you think the boycott is going to resonate 
so, so the the way the academy works is there. It's hard to get into the academy, you know. So you have to have a, a certain amount of films in order to be eligible to join the academy. In order to get the amount of films they need, I don't know whether it's fifteen movies that you produce or something like that. You have to, you know, accumulate that much work, which means you have to have been in the industry that long. And then once you're in the academy, you don't get kicked out. So there are people that have been in the academy for decades and decades that have been sitting there, you know, when a America looked very different than what it looks like now. So so what we've already seen happen because of the actions of some saying they're going to boycott and what we've already seen happen is the academy has 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 made announcements on changes that they're implementing right now. Like so for next year's voting uh season there will be new members of the academy. There will be some diverse yeah so They've all yeah they've already started to make those changes. Now we have to see how it how it makes the real effect, and that takes time. But they've they've been very aggressively, you know, wanting to be uh, proactive in, in in addressing these issues. So we've already seen the 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 tip of the iceberg start to work. It just you know it takes time, and it takes all of us. It takes you know some putting out small films like Perfect Match and us supporting it. Absolutely. You know, because if we stop spending money at the box office, or if we look at you know, because because people could look at it and say, oh, Terrence J. doing another romantic comedy. How many times he's gonna be in a, another black movie with black people? You know, think like a man, right? You you can hear that, right? But Adam Sandler or Seth Rogen. Dude, exactly. So we got to support. And that's why, like, when I see Nate Parker, he did a, a beautiful job with Birth of a Nation. We got to support that film. Michael B. Jordan, anything that brother does, we got to lift that brother so that so that he can accumulate the power that he needs in order for us, for us to make real change in the industry. Anytime there's a Will Packer movie, Kevin Hart, you, you, we got to support. We got to support each other. Absolutely in order to really make difference. Okay, so Terrence, what's this whole thing with you going to the strip club with Nia Long? <laughs> what happened? I was wondering, I knew you were gonna, we were gonna go. So, so we we hosted the Trumpet Awards right. together, and um, I made it as a, as a joke on stage. I was like, y'all know where we going after this. I'm taking her to Magic City. And people <laughs> just started laughing. And uh, she was like, you know, I've never been. And then we just convinced her to go. And she, you know, to see her throw dollar bills in the air. Was it nice? Yeah, yeah. She's so my, beautiful. My only regret was too young for Nia Long. I'm just <laughs> still in love with her. So to be able to call her a friend is uh, it's a lot of fun. Not a lot of people could say they took Nia yeah. Long to the strip club and helped her make it rain like that's i one day i'm gonna write a book i have the cool like i'm just lucky i have the coolest funnest best stories of i got cool stories really I, I love i love my life i love life i love waking up and having a good time if you ever need ebro stories though you just come to me really? i got pre-beard stories so i know What's ebro <laughs> stories? before ebro grew to be before he was old man ebro he was young man ebro and that's when we was in those streets I've heard right? stories <laughs> ebro's a mod i love ebro that, yeah. Cause Ebro is like one of those dudes. Like if you get drunk with him out, or you know, if you're drinking, <laughs> I'm sorry, if you're drinking with him yeah. out, like like there's friends that that will fight with you if it goes down, and there's friends that'll run to the car. Ebro, Ebro, bang out. I love Ebro. Oh yeah. So Valentine's Day is coming up. Yeah. Do you have a Valentine's date? So we're doing. I'm doing a speed dating promotion Are with you the perfect seriously? match. Yeah. What yeah, if you so really gonna, met someone at the speed dating event? Would you? Who, who knows where you could meet someone? Who knows? It could be a church. It could be at the library. It could be speed dating now. What's the nicest thing you've ever done for a lady for Valentine's Day? I'm sure there must have been a nice thing you've done. Um, I like to to could think that I'm a thoughtful guy. Mm -hmm. You know, so like, um, I had one Valentine. She came home and, and I planned like little notes around. So the first note was like, look under the bed. Then she goes under the bed, look under the... So it was like a little scavenger hunt. Right. And then it, the, the end result was a, a really nice bag that she wanted. Um, and I did it in a, a thoughtful way. I, I like thoughtful gifts. I don't yeah. like just like, you know, buying a pair of shoes yeah. to buy. Like I, I want to do like thoughtful things. Um, so I'm, I'm a hopeless romantic. And I was born in the 80s. So every day it's like, I'm not like a texter. Like I'm not like WID. Like I'm like... Like, I'm going to call you to see how your day was. Really? Yeah. You called? Absolutely. Wow. Absolutely. And I got 20 jobs. So if I can call other oh, guys, yeah. I'm like, yo, you can call your, like, if you if you really want a woman, you will pick up the phone and call her. Can you please <laughs> explain that more to women out there? Like, if a man really wants you, 
they will let it be known. Because a Absolutely. lot of times we give guys passes like, oh, well, he's busy. Oh, he does this. Oh, his profession's that. No, if he really wants you, he's going to show you. We're all going through life, right? right. And so there, there is ebb and flows. I mean, there are times when, like like now, I'm, I'm really so absorbed with what I'm doing work-wise. If I had a lady, it would be less. And that's why I don't have, that's why I don't want to do that because I don't want to give less. So you either got to realize that the, the person is in a place where his light in his life where he can't give his all or that he's really not that into you, yeah. you know, but, but there's, there's something in play there where if it's not a hundred percent, you got to at least acknowledge the fact that one of those two things are in play. Mm. But the real way to, to find true love is to go see the perfect match on March 11th. <laughs> and when you do <laughs> love will find you.